Welcome to Digital Marketing Solutions, the only podcast hosted by a marketing and startup consultant with over 20 years experience working for ad agencies across the world. Start getting the results you want with online marketing today. And now, here's your host, David Summerfleck. And hello. Thank you for tuning in or listening in on another episode of Digital Marketing Solutions. I'm your host, David Summerfleck. I'm a digital marketing specialist with about 20 years experience working for different marketing and advertising agencies throughout uh, North America. This is episode number 15. And today my guest is Matt State. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, that's right. Yes. Thank you for joining us, Matt. I really appreciate your time. Can you begin with basically telling us who you are and your professional background and how you came to be a real enthusiast, if that's a fair term, of the social media platform TikTok? And I have a million questions about it. Uh, yeah, certainly. Um the the very short version is that uh, as a kid i was bullied i found martial arts i started falling in love with martial arts done it very seriously for a lot of years had my own gym won a lot of medals got various black belts so on and so forth it became my occupation obviously social media came to the fore facebook that sort of thing so we've used all of that um TikTok came uh, came about a few years ago and over the past year i've embraced it fully it's embraced me and we now share a very uh, happy relationship. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, how did your training in martial arts help you with mindset and building a very specific uh, consultancy in, in TikTok, which is probably one of the most niche businesses that I've heard of in quite some time. So how did your experience in martial arts help you with mindset? And I guess the other question is, how did you come to say, this is my preferred uh, social media platform? Well, the, um, the mindset question, first and foremost, I mean, anyone that's ever done any, <clears throat> excuse me, any form of martial arts will will state that one of the things that, that you get from it as a really good benefit is self-confidence, self-awareness, self-discipline. Absolutely. You know, an, awful lot of, an awful lot of really good things outside of punching somebody in the nose. Um, that's, that's just the medium that we learn from. So uh, when it comes to mindset, it was absolutely pivotal and critical in, uh, in me becoming an adult, um, in me becoming a, a grown-up and taking on the responsibilities that, that sort of come with that. So, um, so yeah, martial arts has, has given me uh, what I like to think is you know, a very good work ethic, the ability to fail and get back up again. That's one of the really good lessons you learn in martial arts. You know, you're encouraged to fail repeatedly until you get it right. Um, so all of those things made a made a huge difference and, has, and have definitely helped with everything outside of the martial arts. Absolutely. I would just interject um, that, that I agree totally. Um, I began taking Aikido when I was in college as an elective, and I was much uh, heavier than I am now. I was probably, I'm around six one and a half, six two if I stand up straight. And I was a good deal heavier back in college. And it was a little bit more, um, uh, what's the word? Or, or, uh, not troublemaker, but a little bit of a roust about, I guess. I can't think of a better term for it. And I just fell in love with it immediately, the very old school traditional discipline and um, really embracing the philosophy. I learned a good deal about Buddhism, the need for focus. Um, and like you said, getting back up again, regardless, because if you give up, or for that matter, if you have a short retention span or want immediate gratification, it will not come through that practice. You know, and I remember falling down many, many, many times, you know, on a daily basis and getting hurt uh, quite repeatedly. Um, so I definitely agree with that. So how did you come to say uh, TikTok is for me? 
Um, well, that was a uh, sort of an interesting revelation. There's a, uh, a famous chap that you may have heard of called Gary Vaynerchuk. Yes. And right. one, uh, one evening I couldn't sleep and, and I was just sort of mulling over things and watching different YouTube clips and stuff. And I stumbled across a Gary V one and he was talking about the platform TikTok. And at that stage, I'd never really heard anything about it. So I thought I'll have a look. Mm. So uh, the next day I happened to be on a business podcast as a guest and, and we spoke about TikTok and I actually said that I was going to look into it properly. So I sort of put some accountability out there in the world at that stage. And, um, and then that's exactly what I did. I, I, I really sort of looked into it properly and decided that it was a very exciting place to be. It had a huge amount of potential and looked as if it was going to be you know, really pivotal moving forward with regards to claiming its space in the top sort of couple of social media platforms. And it's turned out within the past year, it's done exactly that. In the you know the last quarter, it's had record breaking growth. It's absolutely enormous. It was you know it was the biggest um, downloaded app, um, and so it it just it, you know it really has grown to a massive sort of thing now that is really hard to ignore. How does TikTok, for those unfamiliar with it, and I have to confess, I know what it is, I've heard of it, but I don't have a TikTok account yet. So for those unfamiliar with TikTok, how does it, how would you compare it to other forms of social media, uh, such as Instagram and YouTube? For example, uh, it's difficult for me to see as someone who, how can I, in other words, if I'm going to produce an instructional or informative video using YouTube, from what I understand, videos have to be a good deal shorter for TikTok. Is that valid? And how would you compare it to other outlets such as YouTube? Uh, well, TikTok, first and foremost, doesn't actually describe itself as a social media platform. Uh, it describes itself as a library of short form content. So probably the best way to describe it uh, at, a, at a base level is to say, Imagine YouTube after 20 cups of coffee with a sense of mischief and you're not far wrong. It's uh, it's a bit <laughs> like, so it's it's it, it is short form. So it's 15 to 30 second video clips. Okay. So that that does seem like a very small amount of time. However, when we look at the way communication is going, when we look at the attention spans that people have, when we look at the current mm. way the world is moving, we are moving into that more short form sort of thing. And, and we're all doing it regardless, because even um, even people of sort of my age that are used to longer form things and having a bit of patience about stuff, even us now, given the choice, you know, if we went onto YouTube and we needed a how to video, there was one at four minutes and one at 25 minutes, almost certainly we would all opt for the four minute version. So everything's just speeding up now. And this is this is just the next level of that. So hmm. it, you know, it's just a very fast format, but it's very, very engaging. It's got huge interaction rates. And that's one of the things that people say about it the most is once they once they sort of uh, open it up and dive in, then it then it can become this 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 weird time chasm that you just sort of end up lost within it, flicking through and scrolling endlessly. So it would seem it would seem that it would be an ideal platform for people who are maybe, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong or if you disagree, for models, interior designers, uh, landscapers, uh, people who work in very visual mediums. So if I were going to use it, obviously I can't do a half hour walkthrough of a new WordPress plugin, for example, that wouldn't work. I can't do a master class in working with or onboarding clients. It's not going to work. But I could take a infographic image and maybe turn that into a video. That would be two or three seconds long. Is that fair? Yeah, there's 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 lots of different ways to go about it. So um realistically to answer that question, we've just got to understand a little bit more about what it actually does, because at the moment there are there's capabilities on there for just about everything in every guise. 
So in the same way that the whole gambit of human emotion and experience is in the world, it's in TikTok in one form or another. You just got to know where to look for it. So whatever it is that you do, whatever it is that you're into, whatever it is um, you're wishing to um, sell to the world or share with the world, there's, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a client base and an audience out there for you. It's just finding them and talking to them in a way that they appreciate and understand. I mean, that's essentially what I do is I show people how to do that. So if we're talking about tech, tech is actually massive on the platform. And, and a lot of the guys that are showing people how to use tech correctly are doing really, really, really well. Um, again, when we're talking about 15 to 30 seconds, we're talking about one message. But we're also talking about a pipeline, a funnel, a way to bring people into your community that you can then map into other things. So as an example of that, I could say at this point, hey, here's a really interesting thing. It's marvelous. It does this thing. If you want a deep dive, pop over to my YouTube. Right. You know, and it's, uh, and you can you can do that and lots of people are so for commercials it would probably uh, be effective as well very short commercials very to the point uh, yeah as long as they're not direct selling um, mm, okay we're all, again we're all at a point now where we're so used to advertising and we're so used to being sold at that it, it loses a lot of its authority. So as an example, we, you know, most of the streaming channels now, they don't have ads per se because they know we just don't watch them. Uh, most of us have ad blockers on our, on our computers and things. So, so the, a lot of the traditional methods, if you like, of, of, of selling a product or getting in front of an audience, they don't have the power that they used to have. So now we're in a world where social selling is far, far more important than it ever was building a conversation now is really where it's critical. And the, the first thing really now that we want to be looking to do is actually build a rapport with our client customer base, our community, rather than just saying, hey, you know, buy my stuff, because nobody likes that. Yeah, especially I think if you, like you said, you have audiences who are a bit more savvy and know they're being promulgated with marketing content 24 7 and want to at least subconsciously they want to be romance they want to be wined and dined a, a little bit and feel like there's something going on that has some sense of legitimacy so what advantages and what disadvantages would you see in using TikTok? and for example where where would it be optimal and are there circumstances that you could think of where it would not be advantageous to want to use it as a platform to take what you're saying a little bit further and a little bit more depth? Um, well, like everything, there's good and bad points. Uh, and so as an example, at the moment, it favors um, B2C kind of business uh, as opposed to B2B. So it's it's. It's, it's going to be more favorable to you if you have a product or a service that you sell to a customer base, a client base. Um, it's going to be more favorable to you if your uh, mm, okay. area, if you like, is rich in content. So um, you, can, you can look at everything. So, I mean, if we, if we just take the overarching um, health, wealth, and happiness, yeah, we all get the premise of that, and those are the three main sort of tiers, if you like. Um, if you actually break that down on TikTok and you look at health, then that's in the you know eight to eight to ten billion range of people hashtag searching those terms in and around that, and the same applies to the other terms as well. So they're all in there. It's just a case of of honing it in a way that it's reaching out to your community and your audience. So mm. um, if we're looking at positives, then they would be that at the moment it's a very very great opportunity to grow to grow a large number you know with very minimal costs. Um, there's still there's still a very real point at the moment where there's more people consuming the content than there are creating it. So if we look at YouTube, it's the complete mm. reverse. Um, so we're in a world where that's a real positive. So there's a great opportunity for growth, great opportunity for exposure and to, and to get in front of people. So that's a real positive. Uh, one of the negatives at the moment, I would say, would be there are some criticisms around the security elements of the of the platform and uh, has to, as to how much of that is business maneuvering or political maneuvering, that's kind of up for debate. But that that is one of the issues that that, that needs really to be addressed a little more. 
there's actually one of my questions further down. I wanted to get your opinion um, on some of those points. Um, so B to C is a very important um, element right now at this point in utilizing TikTok. And also the fact that I think what you said that there are more, um, it's, it's getting more use than there are you, um, people actively establishing accounts. That's what it sounds like. So maybe it's a rel it's still relatively new as far as social media platforms go. Yes, but what we have to remember on that is that um, a, bit, a bit like an earthquake, you know, you get the rumbling underneath your feet, but it's not until the ground actually like really opens up underneath you that you understand what's going on. And it's, it's, it's been like that for, for the past year, it's been rumbling underneath where it's been growing incredibly fast. Mm -hmm. um, and when we actually look at the growth, we're talking just huge amounts. So it's world record breaking um, in the first quarter of the year. It, it actually took the mantle for that. Um, it's, it's surpassed two billion now. So that what they're saying now is that they think it's roughly about the same size as Instagram. It's bigger than LinkedIn. It's bigger than Twitter. It's bigger than Snapchat. Um, it's, you know, it, it's just, it's just really grown massively underneath people's feet without them sort of realizing it. It's kind of snuck up on them. And so we're in a stage now where the only thing that's bigger is really Facebook and Facebook owned. Hmm. Let me ask you about advertising. Now, do you advertise on TikTok? Do you recommend it for advertising purposes? Um, right. Well, there, TikTok, where it's quite where it's quite a new and young platform. Uh, it's just in its fourth year now. When you look historically, all of the major platforms, YouTube, Facebook, they all monetized in the fourth year. So, so TikTok is just starting to open that out, out for business. So there's a thing called the uh, marketplace, which they've just opened now where influencers and businesses can connect together and start to work out how they want to do things. They've started opening out the ads now, that sort of thing. So it's becoming... Um, more and more accessible for business to advertise like that as to the usefulness of it that's still being honest that's a little bit still up for debate in the sense that that again there are positives in the sense that you can reach massive audiences things like the hashtag challenges that kind of stuff you can do really really well and they're very powerful people like coca-cola nike have done very very well out of that um, but then when you look at the capabilities we're nowhere near what say facebook ads manager can do you know that's right. that is far and above everyone else with regards to the capabilities of, of of being very specific about your target audience so um you have to look at that in other ways with regards to TikTok. but it's a it, you know it's a new platform it's figuring itself out the main the main promise behind it is just the sheer weight of numbers that you can get in front of okay um now, as far as SEO, I don't know how comfortable you are with SEO. Um, is SEO in the use of hashtags, how prevalent could we use that with um, in TikTok? Whether you're a business to consumer a uh, customer who may advertise on TikTok, or let's say you're uh, a digital marketer like me. But, you know, to what extent could we use SEO and hashtags with well, TikTok? The hashtags are really important, and I will come back into that in one second. But with regards to SEO, one of the things that some people haven't haven't quite sort of got yet um, is that it's actually a library of content in the same way that YouTube is. Mm -hmm. It's searchable, it can be ranked in Google, um, and it can be a very good asset moving forward for, for, for an organization to have as a, a, as a place for people to sort of come across, come across you and what you do. So it is a library of content that is searchable and can be found. So, uh, so, so that's worth knowing in that respect. When we look at things like your profile, when we look at things like your hashtag usage, again, really important in the same way that it is 
on, on the other platforms. The two main differences is number one, TikTok is the only platform that actually tells you what's doing really well and what's popular. They do sort of hashtag challenges, they do trending hashtags, and they will tell you what that is and they will tell you what it's worth. So um, if you go on there, you will see there are certain types of dances or certain types of exercises or certain types of challenges. So as an example, I don't know whether you guys have Daz washing powder over there. I haven't heard of, no. of that. That's that's fine. It's enough to know that it's a washing powder. There's nothing really that sexy about it. However, they did a hashtag challenge and that um, and that's created over 100 million touch points on that hashtag. And so that's 100 million people that have seen what they're offering and has been exposed to their product um, through the use of uh, a clever hashtagging. So, it, it, you know, it has a power behind it. So so that's the first thing in the sense that TikTok, you can actually use it and they give you signposts as to what's 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 trending, what's fashionable, what's popular. And then the other side of it is the same as it would be with uh, some of the other media platforms in that it's a way to signpost your content. So if you understand how it works and how the algorithms work and, and that sort of thing, then you can use the hashtags to very clearly identify what it is you're doing and also project that to the right audience. Do you feel that TikTok is gaining in use more in the UK or more in the US or is it fairly competitive? It's growing massively all over the place. I mean, it really is. When you actually look at the numbers, it is, it's genuinely staggering the, the growth. Um, obviously, there's been a, a bit of a hiccup along the way recently with some of the announcements that have been uh, put forward. And it's quite interesting looking at the sort of political maneuverings and, and business maneuverings around yeah. certain people. Um, but that doesn't, what's interesting about that is that it doesn't seem to have slowed the growth one bit. Now, touching on that topic, it's a Chinese owned media company. So it's a natural conclusion to assume that privacy could be a little bit sketchy. Well, I mean, first of all, it's Chinese owned. And second of all, it's a social media platform. So privacy and social media don't always go together like peanut butter and jelly being a, a chinese government subsidiary or or, or or owned through a chinese company what what's going on with their privacy issues and could you speak to what the negative press has been regarding TikTok? uh recently what is alluding to because you may be more informed on what's been transpiring yes yeah, so um i mean firstly if, we, if we're going to have this conversation then i need to point out that i am not a cyber security expert in any sense and uh you know there would be people better served to answer that question at a, at a, at a level uh, and also anything that i say is is mostly opinion and it belongs to me it's not factual and and please don't sue me. Um, <laughs> Absolutely, it's 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 with that um, understanding. Absolutely. What we're what we're looking at really is some is is some is some interesting stuff, and so we have to look at the environment around it to have a better appreciation of what's going on with regards to the maneuvering and so on and so forth. So, as an example of that, um, India actually banned TikTok a while ago, and then reinstated it shortly after. It's just recently banned that and fifty six other apps. But because TikTok is the big one, that's the one that everybody's focusing on. Um, so it's actually banned 57 Chinese owned apps. But then we also have to bear in mind that they have a border, they share a border. There's a lot of tension at the moment. They've got a lot of historical tension. So how much of that is to do with security within the app and how much of that is to do with security overall um, is, is, is a question. Um, then we've got to look at again the american side of things with regards to their uh, there was a, a mention the other day of, of of maybe looking at finding ways to uh maybe even ban it eventually uh and then when you actually look at that and again it's really interesting because if you look at TikTok and if you look at the the people within TikTok, they've actually been mobilizing against trump now regardless of whether or not you like trump that's not the issue the point is that they um, they are actively trying to mess with the campaign. 
and they're succeeding in a lot of ways. And you're talking about an awful lot of people that can't be controlled, um, you know, outside of outside of the app, if you will. Mm-hmm. So there's there's all these political things going on. You've also got to bear in mind that Mark Zuckerberg tried for, for a long time to actually buy TikTok, and when he couldn't, now we're in a position where there are accusations being thrown. You've also got to bear in mind that it wasn't that long ago, just over a year ago, that that, that Facebook was being was having very similar accusations thrown at it. Yes. And, and even when you look now today, um, if you look at the touch points with regards to data collection from its users, Facebook actually has far more data collection points than TikTok does. Um, and then also on top of that, we have to understand that they, the, the, the TikTok itself is telling us categorically that the, the Chinese version, the doyen own version and the ByteDance own version, they're two separate things and they're run off separate platforms. So they're not on the same servers, they're not hosted the same, and there's a very clear distinction between the two. And they're adamant that they don't share things with the, um, the, the Chinese government. Now, how true any of these things are or not, I really don't know. Um, you know, I, I, that's an answer that I can't give. However, what I can say is that if we're going to be honest, And if we have any kind of smart device in our pocket, in our hand, in our home, if we use any of the big players like Facebook or Google or Microsoft, we're we've pretty much signed our life away anyway. So that's an interesting thing to me is is where we're drawing these lines. Well, absolutely. In terms of privacy, um, I don't think you'd really get any privacy um, unless your phone is off. And even then, it could probably still track your your physical location. So you'd have to turn it off and wrap it in aluminum foil, I would think. Um, Now, in other recent news I've read, there are some influencers leaving TikTok. But then you have TikTok openly. Um, I read something where they were creating a fund to encourage more creators or creative people to post content on TikTok. TikTok, excuse me, I said TikTok. Do you know, are you familiar with that funding and how that would work? Or is that still extremely new? Uh, yeah, it's, it's still relatively new, um, but they're, they're actually doing a number of different things to try and stimulate growth, try and move it in the right direction. They're very self-aware, TikTok as a platform, and they're very, very aware that they need to grow and they need to move in certain ways to to sustain it. So if we look at, say, a platform, say, like Snapchat, that's really never going to be anything more than it is because that's all it ever is. Whereas TikTok has invested heavily, especially in Europe, um, it, it's committed to a lot of expert and educational content because it wants to step away from the perception of the lip syncing and the dancing, although that's still a big part of it. It wants to offer more. Um, and with regards to the creators and things, I know that they've they've started quite a few different um, different ideas and different solutions and different funding things for for various kind of creators, including uh, including people that, that would otherwise be. Um, from some of the more difficult backgrounds, shall we say, some of the more challenging mm. uh, backgrounds, because it's a, uh, it's 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 a, it's an opportunity. I mean, that's really that's kind of what it is. The people, uh, the people that that do well on this platform can actually make substantial amounts of money and, and gather a pretty large following and change their life. Okay, where do you see TikTok evolving? Let's say five years from now. I mean. Do you see the advertising taking off to the point where it's competitive with, say, Facebook or Instagram or more like Twitter, which Twitter has advertising, but it's not, uh, in my view, commensurate with uh, Facebook. Um, And it's really not even fair to compare it to LinkedIn, I don't think. Where do you see that heading in? TikTok as a social media channel evolving? Um, Obviously, nobody really knows for sure. But if we look at some of the indicators, so as an example, if we look at the Chinese version and what that's capable of, which is far, far more advanced than what we have here at the moment, 
Um, and if we look at that and some of those possibilities, that's incredibly interesting because from a business point of view, you can buy direct from the uh, from the app, from the video. So as an example of that, if I like the headphones that you were wearing, without leaving this video, I could order it, have it sent to me tomorrow. Fantastic. And all that sort of thing is very possible right now. With regards to facial recognition things, that kind of stuff, it, it's very advanced in all those kind of things. And again, no more than Facebook or anything else. So not in a, um, you know, not in a very scary kind of way, but in how that is used. And so as an example of that, I could be talking to you now and then it could give me your the rest of your um, your Internet sort of history. So if you have a mm. website, it can tell me if you have YouTube, it can tell me, you know, if you've got videos, it can show me. So it can do all of this sort of thing. Um, so it's very, very intelligent. And then when we look at where it might go itself, we're looking at at the moment, it's it's roughly growing at about five times the rate that Instagram did at the same time. So. You know, the fact of it, the fact of it going away and unless there's laws brought in, so on and so forth, that doesn't look likely just by the sheer scale of the growth. Um, what it will become is anyone's guess. But it's but it is, as I mentioned earlier, it is very self-aware and it is taking steps to make sure that it changes it adapts and it grows and it expands in a way that is um, in a way that is suitable and continues the growth. Now. Breaking away from TikTok, maybe not. You've written some books, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, what would you like to delve into those books and what each one covers, just as an aside? Yeah, sure. So, uh, I wrote my first book over a number of years. Like like a lot of other people, I had a uh, I had a belief that I could write a book. I wrote half a book and then I spent two years telling myself it was rubbish. And what was I thinking of? Um, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Um, no, not at all. I, I, there's my first book right there behind me. <laughs> I was so intimidated uh, that I you know, wanted it to be perfect. And I just thought, get it done first. You can always go back, do a second or third draft or what have you. Make it a workbook. And that made it less intimidating. So for a second one, I wanted to wanted it to be more of a, like a fable almost, like an analogy okay. to try to break down very complex te technical topics regarding digital marketing. So what are your what are your books about? Well, I say the first one was uh, was basically memoirs of my time working in security so mm. i spent many years as a nightclub bouncer as a uh, as a bodyguard and post protection person and i did some bailiff stuff and so uh, so for a lot of years i worked within an environment that was challenging and interesting in in many many ways but it was also very misunderstood so the the impetus was I kept getting questions from people around that and and a lot of them was based on as I said these misconceptions so I thought you know what I'll um, I'd like to be able to dispel some of those and there's an awful lot of shall we say hard man books out there yes. um, of, of people that are you know oh yeah you know I used to do this and I beat up all these people and da -de da -de da and I, that's just boring and has been done to death so I actually wanted to try and explain it in a way that was that was readable and accessible and didn't you know glorify it glamorize it or pretend it was something that it wasn't so um so i ended up writing the book which was called modern samurai which is based on uh, my gym is called modern samurai martial arts and that's so that was really where that came from not that i believe i'm some feudal sort of warrior from from a time gone by um and so that was the first book and to my absolute delight uh, it was it was amazing. It was received really, really well. It hit number one in its category on Amazon twice. It got lots of really good reviews and uh, and a lot of my sort of peer group, other instructors, other people working within the industry, they were very, very kind about it. And that led me then to think, well, actually, I can do more of this. You know, I enjoyed the process. I can do more. So um, I then set about writing another one. And that one was in and around sort of martial arts and my martial arts journey. Mm. Sort of vain with regards to sort of memoirs um and then when we go from that I've, i i then wrote some some shorter books which 
So I, uh, so I did one with regards to self-protection and, and, and the best way to look after kids. So 20 easy ways to keep your child safe. That is basically for parents to work with their kids. Uh, I did another one on, on edge weapons and knives and, and how we should look at those in the world as opposed to the silly nonsense we see in the movies sometimes. And then the most recent one that's just come out, again, um, was lucky enough to uh, hit the number one spot on Amazon, was 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 co-written with, with my uh, partner, Kai Morgan, and that was uh, my Online Martial Arts Evolution or Extinction, where we talked about the not just the current situation and the fact that martial arts has had to move pretty much out of the physical space into the online space, but the the evolution of, of the past sort of 30 years and where it's going to go. So mm. from the moment that we started with television to video to DVD to, you know, from books and manuscripts of years gone by and, and how that is going to look moving forward. So, uh, yeah, that was a really interesting exercise. Thoroughly enjoyed doing that. And, um, and yeah, and so it, I just, I, now that I've started it, I can't seem to stop myself. It's like uncorking a bottle. I just, I just really enjoy writing. It's very cathartic. I'm I'm taking a month off um, at the end of August to just work on the second book uh, that I, I mentioned before. It, it is everyone should really take advantage of if you, we, you are working from home, if you're home more often, I would say as a result of COVID, I think being more creative and being more expressive is a good way to deal with it, I think. And on a somewhat related note, you know, I've seen a, a good deal of different authors talking about the overuse of social media and people actually becoming fragmented, if you will, from too much social media because the, what we can't really call it a conversation. Like you and I are having a conversation now for. Hopefully it's a good one, but you can't really have an in-depth conversation in two or three seconds, or for that matter, on, on Twitter. And I wonder, you know, is, do you think that social media is going to evolve over time to permit more in-depth dialogue? It just, it seems like there's something there that's being overlooked a lot. Um, yeah, again, there's that. That's there's so many variables to that particular point. Um, firstly, when you look at communication as a whole, the actual words that we use are only a very small percentage to in a conversation with regards to tonality, body language, so on and so forth, facial expression. So we lose an awful lot of that with the written words straight away, and it's very easy to mis you know, mi misunderstand what the meaning and the intention is and, and quite often that's the case so you know that's the first part of that is that the written word only really conveys a certain amount of meaning and not necessarily what we actually want to say secondly unfortunately i do think we are moving into a world where everybody is becoming more and more polarized and it's not enough these days to actually say you're not sure you have to either be in camp A or camp B. And, and and what's even worse, once you're in one of those camps, you've got to ridicule and dismiss the other camp. That seems to be the nature. Yeah. Um, and then the third part, and, and, and this is the bit that's kind of scary, really, is the fact that our conversations are being manipulated, repressed, um, and sometimes uh, amplified, depending on which particular platform follows which particular agenda very very true it's it's a scary time in that regard um you know i i think it's it's it is more important for people to seek the middle path as they say in martial arts you know the you can't have one extreme or another extreme for very long you just can't maintain it at some point there has to be a middle ground so i do hope that at some point things equal out um what final thoughts might you have uh, regarding our discussion and what you might say to business owners and entrepreneurs out there uh, before they become initiated with TikTok? Um, well, actually, I, what I'd like to do is just sort of touch back on, on, on what you just said in regards to social media. Because sure. The, 
the, the very real opportunity to reach around the world and speak to people on a personal level that we it just was totally unheard of 20 years ago is utterly amazing. You know, the ability to have essentially our own channel, our own television channel where we can, you know, put whatever we like onto it in any way we like to do it. I mean, it's absolutely extraordinary the opportunities that that has brought with us. So um, so I didn't want to be dismissive about that completely and be negative because it's it, there's so many wonderful things about that. Um, yeah, the, I suppose really the, the, the thought would be to, to use it wisely, isn't it? Like everything else, there's, um, you know, a glass of wine with a meal isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, three bottles every evening could probably be considered not a good idea. So it might be a bit much, use it. might be a bit much indeed. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah. I would say people to choose your channels if you like. So rather than trying to be on everything for everyone to just choose the ones that fit you and fit what you're trying to achieve the best so uh, as an example of that i mean obviously i'm on certain social media platforms including tiktok which i use for the the the, the martial arts side of things but then mm. i'm also on linkedin for my business kind of things I'm also on Facebook for more personal kind of things and some martial arts stuff. I'm also on YouTube again for martial arts stuff. And I very much enjoy these kind of longer form conversations on things like podcasts and so on and so forth and interviews because it allows you to actually explore topics and learn about other people. And, and that's really, really interesting as well. So, um, yeah, I, so my, my advice to people is find the, find the ways that suit you and what you're actually trying to do. I think that's really, really key. If you're somebody who is a slow talker like me, you want to take um, your measured time and try to be as deliberate with what you do as possible, um, pick the platform, or I should say maybe three or four platforms, I think, that are optimal. It's very difficult, I think, to, to cultivate on a recurring basis, more than three or four platforms, you may disagree, but I, I think that's a very, very good point. But I definitely need to look into TikTok more because it may be a good home for short video content or um, animated infographic images or something along that nature. Um, before I let you go, do you have any parting thoughts? And then I would just ask you how listeners can reach out uh, to learn more. Uh, well, with regards to parting thoughts, I suppose I would just say to people that, um, again, as I mentioned earlier, social media in any guise is, is, is a genuine gift that I don't think anybody under about 35 properly, properly grasps how wonderful it is because you know, I live in a world where I came from a world where phones were connected to the wall. The idea of having a television screen in yeah. it was just incredible. So, um, so yeah, I, I think it's just not losing the wonder. I think that's that's my top tip for today. Don't, you know, try not to lose the wonder of, of, the, of the things that are in front of us because they are that. They are wonderful. I think it's a, it's a very good point and where some people can see it as being overwhelming, um, especially for the small business owner or for the, or the older uh, person unfamiliar with this, I think it's really incumbent upon them to look at it as it's another potential avenue. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use it, obviously, but you should be informed so that you, you're not intimidated by it. You can pick the right me the right channel for the right medium and the right message. Mm -hmm. So um, I really appreciate your time, Matt. How can uh, listeners or viewers reach out to you to learn more well all the usual sort of suspects so you can find me on facebook linkedin obviously we mentioned uh, tiktok there so either just put matt state into any of those or modern samurai and you should end up at my door in one guise or another i'm definitely going to look you up as well um i enjoy talking with you and thank you so much for your time and uh stay safe where well, you are as well. Thank you so much for your time. Please hang around for another minute or two if you don't mind. And for those listening to the Digital Marketing Solutions podcast, thank you so much for listening or watching us as well. Uh, please let us know 
what you think of this podcast. If you'd like to ask a question to be featured in a future podcast, we will provide the link in the liner notes uh, below or in the actual video as well. And uh, this is your host, David Summerflex, signing off. To learn more about digital marketing solutions, you can visit me online at dms.blue. And thank you again and stay safe out there, everyone. You've been listening to the Digital Marketing Solutions Podcast. To get future episodes as soon as they drop, apply to be a guest, submit questions, or to get direct help with your digital marketing, visit www.dms.blue today. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to give Digital Marketing Solutions a positive review or hit the subscribe button to be notified as soon as our next episode goes live. Thanks, and talk with you next episode.